Thin privilege or obese consequence? Which one do you have? You gotta be so good that they can't ignore you Especially the ones that ain't done shit for you Yeah, you know exactly what I mean They stab you in the back and then they ask why you're bleeding I don't trust words, I trust actions I don't care what you heard, I'm not slacking my name is Alan Robertson. This is Every Damn Day Fitness. Like, subscribe, get a notification over there. Share my video, subscribe to my second channel, Alan Robertson. My opinion, of course, make the bubble at the end. Thank you very much. So this is just a little disclaimer, okay? Just a little teeny tiny disclaimer that this video might be a little harsh for, pe for some people. If you are one of those people that needs to put an asterisk in the word obese or overweight because the word, seeing the whole word written out hurts your fifis, um, or if you believe you can be 400 pounds and completely healthy, if you believe that you'll just because you have problems tying your shoes in, for mobility issues in your 20s and 30s, that you're somehow going to make it happily to 50 or 60, if that if you're one of those people, just turn this motherfucker off because the statement of facts hurts your fucking feelings so bad that this video is really going to suck for you. Uh, this video is going to be about thin privilege uh, and and obese consequences. Which one do you have? Because in reality. We have so many people thinking that they are being discriminated against when, in a matter of fact, the only person that has affected you is you. I was going through Instagram uh, the other day, and my good friend Elgin Tensity, um, he runs the YouTube channel Infinite Elgin Tensity. He runs the Instagram Infinite Elgin Tensity. And he also runs the website Infinite Elgin Tensity where you can get this bomb ass shirt. It says, You've died of obesity. You should fucking get yourself one of these motherfuckers. Anyway, on his Instagram the other day, he posted up this post. And it is the original poster's examples of thin privilege. And it is posted originally by Dr. Stacy of New York. She is Dr. Stacy Rosenfeld. She is a PhD psychologist for Florida, North Carolina, California, and online. She's the founder of Gatewell Therapy, and she is a body inclusive fitness pro. So what we are going to do here is we are going to go through each example of what she considers thin privilege in her opinion. She's a PhD doctor, but this is her opinion. She clearly states in the comment section, that this is anecdotal, in her opinion, it is what she hears from her colleagues and clients. This is not, there's no statistical evidence to support this. She is just stating these things as a doctor, as her opinion. See, she doesn't disclaim that these are her opinions. She is just saying, I'm a doctor, and these are examples of thin privilege, so people believe her, which is something that, you know, often happens. But we're going to go through each of these one by one and talk about whether it's actually a thin privilege or whether it's an obese consequence or whether this shit just happens to everybody, like the first one. Her first example of thin privilege is that people don't mock you, patronize you when you exercise. This one is complete fabrication. Complete fabrication, in my opinion, of course, because it happens to everybody. Infinite Elgin Intensity, the channel Infinite Elgin Intensity, is based off of gym fails of mostly very athletic people. They get made fun of all the time. People get made fun of in the gym all the time. If you're too skinny in the gym, you're way more likely to get made fun of and poked fun of and laughed at than if you're even overweight or obese because an overweight or obese person, have you ever seen powerlifters, motherfuckers? I mean, it, it is very, it's ridiculous. And the problem with this is, first of all, she admits, completely admits that there's no study for this. This is just her opinion, what she hears from her clients and colleagues. But she states it as a doctor and people listen to her. So obese people see her state this as a doctor, as a PhD, and they are going to all of a sudden be more hypersensitive to this type of action and therefore think they're being discriminated against when in fact it is not being singled out because you're obese. It just happens to fucking everybody. The next one is you can shop for clothing in any store. What exact sizes are you talking about? Because I'll tell you this, my wife is five, one and a half and athletic. Uh, she works out every day. She's five and a half athletic. She can't find clothes any fucking wear. Any fucking wear. Everywhere we go, the clothes, the clothes she's looking for are going up to size, you know, 16, 18, but not down to her sizes. That's for fucking sure. Uh, what size are you talking about? Are you talking about, you know, morbidly, like super morbidly obese? It's not a privilege that you, you've, it's a consequence. You become super morbidly obese. You've outgrown the clothing in the store. And very frankly, most stores are carrying much larger sizes nowadays. Much, much larger. And the sizes have gotten bigger. Double extra large now is much bigger than double extra large five or six years ago. They just, they've increased the clothing size for each size. So I call it complete bullshit. If you're talking about if you're a size 30 in a woman's dress and you can't shop in a regular store, that's not a privilege for other people to shop. That's a consequence of you becoming a size 30. That is an obese consequence, not a thin privilege. Next is your body fits in between restaurant tables. Talk about entitled first world fucking problems. That is an obese consequence. I, I was once 260 some pounds, never had that fucking problem. I was obese, never had that fucking problem. Not one fucking time. 
what restaurant are you fucking talking about? Wait, I mean, how big are we talking? Again, this is an obese consequence. If you are so big that you've outgrown a restaurant, maybe you should be cooking at home. Very honest, maybe you should be taking charge of your own food and cooking at home. That's the fucking reality of the situation. Because that is not a thin privilege. That is an obese consequence. Next we have, your doctor doesn't blame all your symptoms on your weight. Oh my God, the doctor thing again. This one is the one that pisses me off, I think, the fucking most. And I'll tell you why. If you go to your fucking doctor and for whatever reason you think that they are not addressing all of your fucking issues, you think that for some reason they've looked over something, maybe they are biased, maybe they're just a shitty fucking doctor, maybe they don't like fat people or they don't like people of your ethnicity or whatever, maybe they fucking don't. If they tell you something you don't necessarily like to hear, go get a second fucking opinion because it is your health and you should fucking take it very fucking seriously. But if that second opinion of a person that went to school for fucking decades that tells you the same thing that the first fucking doctor told you and it's your fucking weight, lose fucking weight. Stop being a fucking child. When you've reached a point where you'll be able to suspend reality to the point where you don't listen to medical professionals because they said something that hurts your fifis, you are endangering your own fucking life. And Dr. fucking Stacy and every other motherfucker that says anything about maybe you shouldn't listen to your doctor because they're just blaming everything on your weight, if a 500-pound person who is dangerously over fucking weight goes to their doctor and the doctor says, you need to lose weight right now or you're going to die of a heart attack, and they pause for even a fucking second because Dr. Stacy or who the fuck ever said, well, my doctor just blames everything on my weight. If they pause for even a second and that person dies of a heart attack, frankly, I consider that on your fucking head, Dr. Stacy, and anybody else that's ever fucking said that shit. When you advise people not to listen to their medical professional, you're just a fucking asshole. The next one is airplane seats fit you and your seatmates don't grimace when you board. Again, another first word entitled ass fucking problem. No fucking shit. Unbelievable. How about this? They grimace because you're taking space they fucking purchased. Just for fucking real. I, first of all, how big must you be? Because I, again, was once 260 pounds. And when I would sit on an airplane, because I did used to do a lot of travel, I would just kind of make sure I scrunched in because I wear a 50 fucking regular jacket or 52 regular jacket the fucking time. So I made sure I didn't take their space. You know why? Because I at least you know, respect the fact that they fucking purchased that space. I didn't purchase their space. I purchased my space and I should fit into my fucking space. Okay. And again, I, how big are we actually talking? If you have gotten so big where you don't fit into an airplane seat as a fucking newsflash, you've outgrown the airplane. It's not the airplane being too small. It's you being too big. I know that, I know that might hurt some people's feelings, but that's just fucking fact. If you are so big that you fit into two seats, you should buy, buy two seats. You absolutely should. It is a matter of space. It absolutely is. It's a matter of resources and paying for the resources. If a person next to you has paid the same price you have or paid, even got a better deal, who the fuck cares? If they paid for their fucking space and you take some of it, they're grimacing because you're taking some of their fucking space. Period. It's fucking rude on your part to take up some of their space that they fucking purchased. And then for you to be fucking assy about it, like, oh my God, they're grimacing because I'm, I'm gonna sit next to them. Yes, because you're taking some of their space. For you to not realize that is just fucking unbelievably detached from fucking reality. The next one is chairs and public spaces fit and support your body. How big are we actually talking? Because I have sat down with people way bigger, way bigger than I was when I was obese. I'm talking, I've sat down with people that are like 400 pounds how big are we actually talking? Because the last thing that anybody that runs a public space would want is for somebody to sit on a piece of their furniture and have it break and then hit the floor because that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. So they're normally pretty big and pretty sturdy, just to be real. So how big are we actually fucking talking about? See, the thing is, if you don't fit into a chair or it's dangerous for you to sit in a chair or something like that in a public space, it is not a privilege for other people to sit there. It is a consequence of your size that you cannot. It is a consequence. Blood pressure cuffs, hospital gowns, and MRI machines fit your body. How big are we talking again? Last time I would ask, how big are we talking? Because when I was at my biggest, 52 regular jacket fit right into an MRI machine. 20 inch arms, never a problem getting my blood pressure taken. So how big are we actually fucking talking here? How big are we actually fucking talking about? If you're 350 pounds and up, and you truly love yourself, you're truly body positive, you just need to accept the fact that you don't fit into the world anymore. The world is not fucked up. You're the one that decided to be big enough not to fit in it. That's just the fucking reality. It is, it is a consequence of your choices. That's, re, that's, that's actual reality. In reality, there are consequences to your actions. If you continuously grow, continuously get yourself bigger, and then you don't fit into shit, that's not a privilege somebody else has that you've lost. It's a consequence of your actions. You need to start accepting that. If you really want to be considered body positive, you need to accept that other people aren't privileged over you. It's just what comes along with being who you are. And lastly, 
People don't judge your food choices. This one always makes me laugh because it's like reverse bullshit. It's just so fucking stupid. You can eat a whole pizza at a football game party. You can eat a fucking three dozen wings. You can eat three dozen wings at a baseball game. You can eat a pint of ice cream because somebody broke up with you. All totally acceptable. Totally acceptable fucking things. Nobody bats an eye. Show up with fish and broccoli in a Tupperware container to a party. People will judge the fuck out of you. They absolutely will. If anything, it goes the other fucking way. Just very fucking honestly. That's the issue, though. When these people talk about thin privilege... There are people that have privilege over other people. There are people that are discriminated against and other people have privilege over them. That is true. Most of the fucking time, that is because of how the person is born, their skin color, their ethnicity, things like that. And those are absolutely fucking wrong and they're real fucking issues. But acting like people are discriminating against you or people have privilege over you because of your long-term chronic eating habits that have gotten you to the point where you're morbidly obese, that definitely diminishes the fact that other people are very seriously discriminated against over things that they cannot fucking control. And that is wrong. In my opinion, it is absolutely wrong. When you think what you think is discrimination based off of your size is actually the consequences of your long-term unhealthy eating habits that have gotten you to the point where you're super morbidly obese, which is the thing you should be addressing anyway for your long-term health. And that's just my two cents on the matter. My name's Alan Roberts. Hit me up on Instagram at Alan Roberts EDF. Hit me up on Twitter at Everyday Fitness. I'm also on Facebook at Everyday Day Fitness. And I'm on the internet at EverydayFitness.net. And if this pissed you off, I don't fucking care. Goddamn.